Hello, I am Professor Yash Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. I just want to just a very basic points uh, which you, you all must, might have already studied just to recall this. Um, physical quantities that transform with the uh, coordinate axis in a manner of equation whatever we have just seen uh, one coordinate to other uh, okay, are called uh, tensors of uh, second rank. Okay, the physical quantities. What 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 are the physical quantities we measured? We we looked at st stress. Okay, that's the physical quantities. So the the physical quantities uh, such as stress strain. Okay, that transform uh, with the coordinate axis in a manner like what we have. They are called tensors of the second rank. Okay, so the stress strain and many other physical quantities are the second rank tensors. Very important. So, you keep that in mind. The one good thing is uh, about this is, so once you uh, see that stress uh, can be treated as uh, second rank tensors, then there is lot more avenue to do mathematical manipulation, that is the idea, right. All the tensor quantities, all tensor manipulation you can bring in and then try to see how much uh, 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 clarity you can bring in, you know, because uh, such a complex quantity, it is not like in a vector, right. Where which requires only three components to describe, but uh, once it moves to the uh, tensor form, it is a little more complicated. So, a scalar quantity which remains unchanged with the transformation of axis requires only a single number for its specification and they are tensor of zero rank. Okay. So, any scalar quantity is, is not going to change, uh, they are going to remain unchanged for any transformation of coordinates. Okay. So, they are tensors of zero rank. Ah, just I mentioned vector quantities requires only three components for their specification. So, they are tensors of a first rank. So, a vector is tensors of first rank uh, and the, the stress is uh, you know tensors of second rank. So, this is important. So, the number of components required to specify a quantity is 3 to the power n, where n is the rank of the tensor. And uh, the we are going to see in, 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 in few classes, the elastic constant that relates stress with the strain in an elastic solid hmm, is a fourth rank tensor with 81 components in the general case. Okay. So, uh, we use elastic constants, Young's modulus, right. So, that relates the stress and strain uh, for a pure elastic material as it is a fourth rank tensor that means uh, 3 to the power 4 which is 81 components are required to specify the state of stress clearly, do not describe the state of stress whatever. So, but we will be uh, seeing this when we go to a specific uh, cubic system, how this elastic constants are evaluated, right. So, uh, stress is a second rank uh, tensor, the components of the stress tensor can be written as like this. So, we can write uh, um, sigma ij, it is a tensorial uh, representation is equal to mod of sigma 1 1 sigma 1 2, sigma 1 3 and sigma 2 1, sigma 2 2, sigma 2 3, sigma 3 1, sigma 3 2, sigma 3 3 or it can be a, simply a sigma x, tau x y, tau x z and so on. So, uh, so once it is in the form of uh, uh, the matrix then it is uh, easy, easy for us to uh, relate this with some other properties as well. For example, the, the first invariant of this matrix is uh, I1, we were talking about three invariants, right. So, the first invariant is uh, I1 is what? I1 will be sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z, right. So, I2 is what is summation of principal minors, right. For example, if you take uh, um, uh, what is principal minors? So, if you take this, so it will be sigma y tau y z tau z y 
sigma is that plus so on it will keep on going like that right. So, the I 3 will be see the I 3 will be the solution of the uh, entire determinant right. So, that will be the uh, these are all the quantities we can uh, relate we have already seen that. So, I am not going to repeat it I have already shown what are the invariants in the 2 3 slides before. So, all that I want to emphasize here is uh, stress is uh, uh, a tensor of rank 2 and uh, it can be written like this ok. So, this is one some of the basic idea I want to just uh, flash it and then move around. So, again uh, coming back to this more circle of uh, uh, two dimensions we have seen, but this is going to be a three dimension now. So, this is not two, this is three. Okay. So, so the more circle also can be uh, visualized uh, in three dimension. So, what you are seeing in this uh, more circle is uh, how a triaxial state of stress defined by the three principal stresses can be represented by three more circles. So, what is that we are seeing? So, this is the uh, member which is subjected to triaxial state of stress that means two normal stress uh, of equal magnitude the third one is uh, in a compression mode the, these two are in a tension mode. So, three dimensional state of stress is plotted in uh, more circle. So, what we are seeing here is uh, you have sigma 1 that is the highest uh, principal stress and sigma 2 is here and sigma 3 is completely compression. Sigma 3 is compression, sigma 2 is tension, sigma 1 is tension and uh, talking to um, talking about uh, uh, shear stress the tau 2 is uh, highest and this is a tau 1 and this is tau 3 ok. So, tau 3 and tau 1 and tau. So, any combination of uh, uh, stresses can be brought into this uh, a simple representation a graphical representation that is the beauty of this uh, um, representing the more circle right. So, that, that is how uh, you can just uh, use the make use of them. So, uh, to take some few examples this uniaxial tension and uh, you see that uh, there is only one axis where sigma 1 is uh, acting. So, this is this is how it is represented. So, it is very simple if you have sigma 1. So, the sigma 1 is the maximum and this is the uh, sigma 1 by 2 that is a maximum shear stress and sigma 2 and sigma 3 will be 0 ok if it is a uniaxial tension at the same opposite uh, uniaxial compression. So, it comes to a complete negative uh, axis sigma 3. So, and then this is a max and sigma 1 and sigma 2 is equal to 0. So, this is this way of uh, representing and you can now represent uh, biaxial tension and triaxial tension. So, biaxial tension is uh, this is an element of equal magnitude sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, uh, you have this uh, sigma 3 is 0 here. So, sigma you can see this is the maximum and then this is sigma 2 in tension and this is uh, tau 3 maximum and tau 1 maximum and this is tau 2 maximum ok. Shear stress maximum is here, this is tau 1 and tau 3 ok. So, so what, what is that uh, even though it is sigma 3 is 0, but sigma tau 3 is not 0. So, this is how you have to uh, remember right. Similarly, for triaxial tension, so this is an element uh, where it is subjected to triaxial tension. So, uh, sigma 2 and sigma 3 they are uh, equal in magnitude. So, sigma 1 is the highest here 
and this is sigma 2 and sigma 3 and this is a tau max okay and uniaxial tension plus biaxial compression so uniaxial tension this direction biaxial compression in two orthogonal direction so how it is represented so you see that uh, sigma 1 again uh, the highest and uh, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are equal but in compression so you have uh, tau max is here which is sig tau 2 is equal to tau 3 is equal to tau max so uh, the the what you can uh, appreciate uh, by looking at all these examples is uh, any combination of uh, uh, stress okay can be visualized you can just resolve this you know normal stress versus shear stress and also as a function of any angle orientation right you can just easily represent this um, that is why uh, it is useful right we can just look at the uh, it is basically a representation but instead of looking at all these complex equations if you can just put this uh, in one graph uh, then it is easy to visualize so that is an advantage right okay that is about this uh, more circle and uh, I, so far we have just uh, discussed about the description of a stress now I want to move on to description of strain okay so uh, again we, it will be a little more detailed but uh, you will realize that uh, uh, as we move along in the, the course these are all very um, important but uh, um, people normally tend to ignore this uh, small small details so it is better to spend some time on this and then uh, have a complete grip and then get into the subject so like strain uh, like stress uh, strain is related to change in dimensions and shape of a material the most elementary definition of strain is when the deformation is along one axis so like this you have the normal component and which is being pulled in um, both direction in a r1 direction in one axis in both directions right and uh, strain is uh, given a very simple definition uh, strain is equal to change in length by original length in a in the beginning also we have just uh, written average strain we talked about average strain right and here we are talking about a strain at a description of a strain at a point okay uh, here also we are making a very simple introduction we are not uh, giving any specific uh, coordinates or the point but just uh, ge general description then we will get into the details okay so when a material is stretched the change in length and this uh, the strain are positive when it is compressed the change in length and the strain are negative so you can do uh, when you say change in length it could be uniaxial tension or compression both operation involve uh, the change in the shape right so so it could be a positive strain or it could be a negative strain so we can uh, this confirms with the signs of stresses which would accompany these strains tensile stresses being positive and compressive stresses are negative these are conventional way of putting it and uh, as i just mentioned this is uh, this definition refers what are called normal strains right uh, which change the dimensions of a material but not its shape in other words angle do not change very important so when you say normal strain we are not talking about angle okay so it changes the dimensions of a material but uh, not its shape okay on the other hand there are normal strains along three mutually perpendicular axes so similar to stress we also have the normal strain along the three mutually perpendicular axes the moment you bring this kind of uh, a change in this what what is what is that uh, 
um, changing here, it is again a shear stress notation. So, the shear stress brings uh, what change into this basic member, uh, basic member. So, it, it gives a angular change phi by 2 okay, here and here with respect to this line and with respect to this line there is an angle change. So, when there is uh, uh, by contrast chains which involve no length changes, but which do change the angles are known as shear strains. Okay. So, normal strain and shear strain. Okay. They are these are all very subtle uh, definitions, but it is useful if you pay some attention what are the details involved because these things you can relate later on you know for example, if you say uh, deformation. So, what causes deformation? What type of is it just a simple length change or uh, you know whether it is a slip or uh, we, we have we will use lot of terms right. So, these uh, small small details only bring in clarity later. So, that is why we are paying attention to this and um, for normal strains the usual symbol is epsilon. Uh, the same system of subscripts is used as for stresses with respect to x, y, z axis. We have strains epsilon x, x, epsilon y, y and epsilon z, z hmm? with us with the stresses. The first subscript giving the normal to the plane which is being displaced and the second subscript indicates the direction of displacement similar to what we have described in the uh, stresses. Uh, strain also have uh, two subscripts to uh, describe. And uh, since the subscripts are always repeated, we sometimes just use single subscript. Conventionally, the symbol for shear stress is gamma and the same subscripting system gives rise to strains such as gamma x y, gamma y z, gamma z x. So, now we are looking at shear stress. Uh, not shear stress, it is a strain, we are discussing about strain, sorry, it is strain, there is a typo, shear strain here, okay. Um, other quantities that are associated with the strain are displacements, okay. So, what are displacements? So, we need some time to uh, demonstrate this. These are simply the distance moved by any point of the material. Usually the displacements in, in the x, y, z directions are denoted respectively by u, v, w. When a strain is present, the displacement must vary from point to point. It is easy to see that normal strains are given by epsilon x, x is equal to dou u by dou x, epsilon y, y is equal to dou v by dou y epsilon x x is equal to dou w by dou x. This is again a typo here, epsilon z z right. So, uh, the displacements are uh, for a normal strains are given like this. In these cases, the strains are always small. This enables us to use simple simple theory right. In, in this context small means that the square of the strain is negligible in comparison to the strain itself. For example, epsilon square is far, far less than the epsilon ok. So, that is the idea. In general, the action of stresses will cause material to change in volume. Only the normal stresses are associated with the volume strain. We define volume volumetric strain E as change in volume divided by original volume. So, we, we are bringing now uh, little more details uh, as compared to a normal strain uh, or uh, we will later on we will also see that you know engineering strain uh, we will we will come to that. But then even before uh, going into other details uh, normal strains now we are talking about volumetric strain right. The volumetric strain is simply related to the normal strain. Consider the rectangular solid illustrated, the original shape is on the left hand side and the deformed shape is on the right hand side. So, the volume of the original volume is given by the V naught 
del x, del y and del z. So, uh, this descriptions I will uh, go with some little more illustrations. Uh, I do not want to continue, uh, I mean uh, overload today, I will just stop here. We will come out with some more uh, descriptors and then we will uh, continue the uh, discussion on uh, descri describing the strain in much more detail with a little, little simple mathematical uh, formulas and we will also bring some clarity in nomenclatures, right. For example, normal strain, we were talking about an average strain, okay, uh, that what is that normal strain, then what is the shear strain we know, then now volumetric strain we are talking about. So, uh, we will bring in a lot, lot more uh, clarity once we bring uh, bring some geometry and then describe in terms of some basic equations, then that clarity also will come. Because please remember, ultimately we will be experimentally measuring only the strain, right. So, in, I said that stress cannot be physically measured. So, it is better to uh, bring in little more clarity in this uh, domain before uh, we get into other uh, relations, right. So, that is that is the purpose of this uh, uh, introduction and fundamentals and we are spending too much time on this because it will give lot more uh, clarity and confidence as you move along, okay. So, we will continue uh, in the next class. Bye.